How do you get on Fool Us? Do you want me to say like what the email address is? Or like my name is Scott Green. Uh, you may know me from Fool Us or from my book, Excellence in Family Magic. Stand up, crack that egg into that glass, and egg extinguish any doubts. No way! Hey, run! Well, I'm, I'm, I'm primarily known as a family magician, and family magic is a lot more versatile than traditional kids' magic. If you're a family magician, you have to entertain the kids and the adults at the same time, which is a lot more fun as a performer. Uh, everyone in the room is watching the show and enjoying it. If you take the kids out, I can do a show for the grown-ups. If you take the grown-ups out, I can do a show just for the kids. But it's so much more fun when you, you, can, you can do a show like a Pixar movie where it's entertaining the kids and the adults on two different levels. It's, it's just fun and fulfilling, and um, everyone gets to have a good time. Sort of been very exciting to receive when I was like 10 years old. Uh, and it looks from the cover like there's a lot of stuff in here that we don't normally see in uh, kids' magic kits. Looks like it's not one of those standard uh, kits that I used to get as a kid. Am I supposed to just open, like, quick break the tape open and open it? Do what you want, man. Alright. I need to mess up my hand. Are these cut no cut or are these actually gonna work? Alright, the cut no cut. I, I, I asked first. Alright, if I open this up, there's a bowling ball in there, I'm gonna freak out. But let's see what the plastic bag and stuff on the cardboard are. Mm. And maybe, maybe it's okay. We've got the bag and stuff, we've got our cardboard. You guys have this in here, the trifold screen. Though. This is nice, this is like a real, this is a real trick. This isn't just like some crap. This is very nicely done. It's, it's a heavy panel and you got the, the gimmick, which is uh, a good size, a good size. Look, like this, I guess. Oh, so this is part of the performing table as well. Oh, okay. You clever guys up here. Dinner, so that goes there. And this thing. So this, uh, the audience is keying off your confidence as a performer, so if something goes wrong, as long as it's not the last thing in your show, you move on and they'll forget it happened. I got on Fool Us because I do a lot of TV work in Chicago, so I have a lot of TV experience. Um, I, I pitch and do live magic TV segments in Chicago all the time. And uh, so I, I had a pretty strong sense of what was going to look good on television. Uh, it was a Russian roulette routine where I was uh, cracking eggs above her head. And, uh, you know, just to you, you send that in, and the producers can imagine Allison hamming it up and reacting to that. And, uh, they want to work really well on camera. So it was. Um, it was figuring out something that that where they would they would see why it would be good on television, um, and that came from experience of just doing a lot of live TV uh, in Chicago. So I think I think you can yeah the advantage is fine. Um, I don't think a spectator is going to feel the difference between one or two sponge bowls, even though they're not super soft. So this this is a good. Um, it's better to include sponge bowls in a magic set for kids than to not include sponge bowls. Um, I, I just don't see a lot of like the usual crap in this. So I'm very impressed by that. That's this is another good one. Um, is there is there a thing in here to blow the bubble with? <laughs> Very good. Ooh. You could put that in the kids show. That'd be a lot of fun. So there there is. Um, you guys made a mistake in manufacturing a hole in this ring. So it's right there. Uh, what do you make of it? I mean, I think that there's a perception that. There's a perception that children's magic is lesser than adult magic, and I think a lot of that comes from the fact that it's a lot easier to get booked as a kid's magician than as an adult magician, because the bookers tend to have less on the line. It's it's a birthday party, and it's not a corporate event riding on it. You know, someone's not going to get fired if the kid's magic show doesn't go great. It's a chance to save some money, they get a cheap magician. So if you love doing magic and you want to do shows, um, you don't have to be that good to start getting hired as a kid's magician, which means when people see kid's magicians, which is the main way I think that people see live magic, there's a good chance they've seen someone who's not great at it. Barrier to entry is like nothing. Anyone can learn a couple tricks and go do a kid's magic show, and they do. But you can, you know, you can study up and you can learn and you can do a great show that just happens to be performed for a family audience. I'm very impressed that the levitation gadget isn't a thumb tip with a suction cup. This is actually a visible thread. But well, bravo to you guys for, this is a real, it's a real-ass magic kit. When you do an adult corporate show, you know, you can make thousands of dollars at a time, but those gigs, especially when you're starting out, are few and far between. And if you're doing birthday parties, um, if, you, if you market yourself, if you get good reviews on Yelp, if you, there's no reason that you can't charge more than everyone else in your market. Someone's got to have the best show in your market. And if it's you, you should be the person making the most money. Uh, in Chicago, I charge more than anyone else does for a birthday party, and my show typically is... And the reason 
that the parents will pay a lot of money for a birthday party magic show is because they want to see the show. So when you have a family magic show as opposed to a kid's magic show, the parents want to see it. The mom who's booking you wants to see the show. She wants to have fun for that 45 minutes. So if you have a reputation as doing a show that's fun and magical and exciting and surprising for the grown-ups, then they're going to they're gonna want to book you for selfish reasons. They're going to make up that decision in their mind of what they want, and they'll find whatever they want to justify it, whatever they need to tell themselves to justify paying what you're charging. But if that's the show they decide they really want to see, they're going to book you. Uh, you can do a trick with this. Uh, I like to call the thumb tip vanish. Like what the email address is, or like if you're a if you're a family magician, the, the key to getting on fool is is just to do a great act. I mean, the fact that you're a family magician uh, or a kids magician or whatever, however you classify yourself, is not an excuse to be lazy or not do the best magic you can do. Not a snake. What do you guys think is in there? Okay, that's the that's the one thing that can't be in there. So it it says it says not a snake. But, now hang on, I wrote, I wrote that on the bag. Why would I trick myself? So uh, you, gotta, you gotta visualize what you wanna have happen, visualize the plot, the, what the routine's gonna be, what the humor is, what the conflict is, and then build the magic around that. Um, and if you start that way, if you start with, I, I want everyone in the audience to be doing X, or I think it'll be funny if Allison's reacting to Y, um, then you add the magic later. Figure out the method after that, but figure out what you want to happen, what's the story, what's the plot, what's the audience going to be excited about, interested in, compelled by. That's first, that's more important.